hello guys i am back sorry i was gone so 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 long i kept having things happen and something else happened and something else happened so it was like what is going on i'm telling y'all um the devil was definitely throwing so many things my way and i wanted to continue reading this book because this book just i haven't even read through the whole book myself to be honest with you guys i just kind of i read along a, a little bit ahead of what you guys what i read on you know on youtube and so um when i was going through some things i really was going through some things just felt like one thing after another and all i could think of was some things that she was saying that priscilla was saying in the book when she was like if he don't the devil don't get you one way he's going to try another way and he's going to try another way he's going to try another way so he's going to keep going until he can get you down right so that is um that's pretty much where i've been i've been it's been it it's become comical to me i start laughing because i'm like are you serious devil like come on stop like what way can i get you to backslide that's that's what it felt like like what can i do to get you to just give up and be like i'm done <laughs> right that that's what the devil wanted and um and i just was like i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it i had to go back and encourage my own self y'all take advantage on facebook if you're not a part of my facebook group please join there is some powerful prayers on that facebook group and there's powerful prayers on this on the youtube this youtube channel but if you go into the facebook group and whatever situation you're going through at the top of it you can put prayer for and all my prayers that i put will come up so i had to encourage my own self at times okay when i just felt didn't really feel like praying or didn't really feel like doing things and i realized how strong i am and then i had some technical things my the the um device that i normally record on that just was messed up and so um, that sounded terrible and every time I try to record something will happen and then my tripod bro broke and then it was one thing after another then I have quite a bit of family with me so I couldn't really record down there and there's a baby in the house so it was like one thing after another but now I'm like okay I'm in my, so right now I'm in my bedroom and hopefully the lighting is okay because this is literally my backyard it's beautiful because it's fall <laughs> and I have to record while it's light out otherwise I don't have my lights or anything like that so so that's where I'm at today. So I'm happy that I'm, I was able to, I said this morning, I said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to read this book because somebody needs to hear this book. Um, it's important to have things in your spirit so that when stuff happens, you know how to counteract it and you know how to get right on it and not let it take you all the way down or take you into depression. I've been there before where I, when things before in the past, will, it will keep coming. I had, I went into depression and I will never let that happen again. Never. So I'm like, let me get out of this funk. Let me get myself together. Let me get back up so I can get back to ministering and to helping other people out. So let's go ahead and get started with this. You guys, we're on page 52 if you're following along, okay? So it says the Roman soldier belt or girdle served several purposes. One was to add support and strength to his core, as we've already discussed. But the, another purpose was equally important. The belt secured several additional pieces of his armor and kept them solidly in place. So... I'll insert a picture so you can see what I'm talking about, but that's pretty much how the belt was. It, it was to serve um, not just one purpose, not just to keep it up, but it was to support a lot of stuff, okay? So his sword and dagger, for example, they were attached um, there for easy access. The heavy breastplate, which protected the soldier's heart and vital organs, connected to the girdle as well. So everything was connected. Also, I mentioned during our video lesson, well, let's not talk about that because <laughs> we don't have a video lesson here, but it says, so the girl did three things. So number one, it did was it gave support to the core, right? And then it held and stabilized other pieces of armor and then it secured the, tu the tunic, right? So it says a soldier without his girdle was like a policeman without his holster. So if you imagine a policeman uh, without that holster, without something to put their their gun in and, and the whatever else they carry um imagine them running and carrying on like that would just not be good um so it says without a legendary uh would need to carry his sword in one hand and his dagger in the other right so that's what would happen <laughs> like maybe keeping his shield up or using his fist to fight with like he couldn't use anything if he had to walk around holding up his belt and holding his his things his fighting equipment in his hands 
Um, it says, or reaching for another weapon. Furthermore, with, it, without anywhere to keep his breastplate anchored and steady, he risked leaving his chest uncovered, exposed to the fiery lit arrows of the enemy. The belt, in other words, was the hanger necessary to organize, secure, and stabilize the rest. So once he had that, he was able to leave his breastplate, like his breastplate was able to be um, covered and sealed so nothing would happen to him, you know? And um, because imagine if he had to walk around with all of that running and trying to fight, this is all going to be left open, right? And so there's a possibility you could get hurt. Let's jump ahead and consider each of the other pieces of armor, focusing on the spiritual description of virtue. This will help us see how truth really is a stabilizer for all of them. Righteousness means living right, okay? The process by which we apply truth to our lives and produce conduct, honoring, and pleasing to God. Then we have peace. It's the inner internal stability the believer possesses by virtue of the relationships with Jesus, a stability that's not subject to external circumstances. Is also the quality that enables us to live harmoniously with others, right? Faith is the application of what one believes, the process of putting feet to God's truth and living the light of it in practical terms. Salvation, y'all know what salvation is, right? It's both uh, our internal security with Christ as well as our full inheritance we've been given through relationship with him. It includes our blessings, status, and identity and everything we've received that enables us to live victoriously for him. The word of God, his present, relevant, personal word to us for today. The Bible may look like an old book, but God's spirit makes it fresh, new, and alive for us every day. How many times have we went and opened the Bible or something and it's just what we need for today? Or how many times did I put a scripture on Facebook and you're like, man, this is really ministering to me today because God's word goes on and on and on. Generations and generations is not just for back then, right? And prayer is not the only um, it's not the only way in which we communicate with God, but also the divinely authorized method by which we grab a hold of Christ and gain access to his promise, power and victory. So, yeah, that's the way we communicate with God. But it's also the way that we um, say, God, th th our promises, our prayers, we pray for things also as well. So that all comes through prayer. So we have to make sure that we have a prayer life. Right. Now, what good can a soldier be in a battle if he's not operating hands free? There's too much to be done. Too many enemy attacks to defend against. And without, without the ability to move quickly, freely, and with nimble agility, there's no viable response to the advances of the devil and his demons. But with truth on board, position where it belongs, these hands are ready to fight. So it's saying if you possess all the things on the other page that I just said, the righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, the prayer, then you have all of your stuff on where you don't have to sit and try to fight each thing because everything that came at me, I did not try to fight it. I Look, I couldn't fight it. Some things, like I said, I just prayed and allowed it in the spiritual realm, but I had everything in position, still being a correct kingdom citizen, a correct Christian that I should have been and possessed all the qualities that I should have had. And so when it came time to fight, for me, it wasn't like I was just so, I wasn't like I was like, I can't do this. And I'm laying on the ground, laying on the bed, depressed. No, I was like, let me get up. Let me find something. Let me get myself together. So it's a good thing the truth is on our side. Interestingly, the soldier's belt not only stabilized the other pieces of the armor, but it also bore some of the weight, relieving pressure from the shoulders, right? Without it, the soldiers was forced to bear the full weight of everything. Most notable, the cumbersome press plate, which otherwise would wear down his energy, making him far less effective in battle. Right. So you get the you're seeing the spiritual connection. So without the belt of truth, you're left with the burdensome responsibility of carrying the full weight of your own breastplate, your own righteousness. That's difficult. Right. Instead of God fulfilling your requirement for righteousness, you're on the hook for it. So instead of God making you acceptable in his sight through the sacrifice of God, his son, uh, his son, sorry, you're responsible for somehow proving yourself spotless and perfect in his sight. Good luck with that. But with God's truth strapped around your body, you're relieved of that pressure. So you don't have to worry about all those things that are being thrown at you. And, and that you can just give it to God and be like, God, I, 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 I need you to deal with this. I really need you to deal with this. So it's God's word, truth reveals that righteousness has been given to you through faith in Christ as a free gift, freeing you from living the weight of all that sin on your shoulders. We don't have to deal with it. 
And so many times we do. And that's why we're so tired. That's why we're so bogged down. That's why we have so much anxiety and depression and all that stuff. Because we're trying to carry stuff that God said, give it to me. I'll carry it for you. Yes, you may be going through some things, but you need to depend on me. I got you. I got you with this. Ephesians 6 is the only place in the scripture where girding is mentioned within a military context. Girding was the act of gathering up a lengthy draping tunic and tucking it into the girdle to allow free range of motion for the legs. It is generally agreed the military tunics differ from civilian versions and that that they were which they were actually longer. But both types of individuals could be seen wearing one. Elsewhere in the scriptures, girding refers um, generally to a Jewish man who would pull up his traditionally long draping toga wherever he was about to engage in a task or activity that required him to be more mobile or active. And as with the soldier, the purpose of all this girding was to get moving and avoid falling. So, so that we don't fall, y'all, right? To experience freedom of movement, restricting the tunic, released and free the feet. And that's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to fall. He wants us to backslide. He wants us to go the opposite way. But if we're strapped truly and have all those things that we should be doing, then we're, we'll be okay, right? Says, well, um, this was probably not Paul's direct meaning when writing about girding your loins. The culture and context of his action provides us with a striking illustration and spiritual lesson. Often when God wants to move you forward to the next level with him, he may require you to tuck in your tunic, right? To restrict certain things within the boundaries set by his truth. So when you willingly submit, true freedom awaits you. You cannot advance against the enemy successfully and keep from tumbling into error unless you are willing to submit to God's truth. So you have to do the things. You have to have that, you guys. But that's how God moves you on to the next level. He's going to have you to tuck in your tonic. So you got to get prepared and get ready to move, right? And without truth, Without an absolute non-negotiable standard, there's no real liberty. Without guidelines, there are central and authoritative to our experience. Everyone is governed by their own self-regulated principles, which could be faulty or even dangerous to others. Here's an example. If you live in America, you possess certain um, inalienable rights that, may, that are yours merely by virtue of citizenship. But just because this nation is free does not mean that you can do whatever you want, right? So there are boundaries, there's laws within everyone must restrict their freedoms, right? So it's kind of saying like, okay, yes, we live in America. It's a free country, you know, it's a great country. Um, but at the same time, there's laws of the land that we have to obey. If the speed limit says we need to go 55, then we need to go 55. Because what will happen if you don't? Disaster is the same thing with us being kingdom citizens, okay? It says without these boundaries, everyone's personal def definition of freedom could infringe on others' personal freedoms. So the laws do restrict us, yes, but they also offer something else. They free us to live peaceably, comfortably, and at ease with each other. So that's what it does, you guys. The belt of the truth, the clothes hanger for your entire outfit of spiritual weaponry, the safe spot for tucking away those things that often tangle up around your feet and hinder the freedom of movement. As much as we may not like how the girdle pinches and hugs us sometimes, it is meant to unbundle a whole new world of opportunity for us. It helps us hold off our enemy and hold a steady course and the truth sets us free. And that is awesome because... Um, that's exactly i put on facebook the other day um yet last night actually um, make sure you go back if you haven't and answer the question that i put on there what is holding you back from being just a um doing the best job you can as a kingdom citizen or a christian like what what is it what what is it your time because you can't spend time reading the word is it that you still are dabbling in sin and you can't stop is it um like what what is it because we have to get to the root of those problems so we can fix it, so that we can pray for each other, so that we can get that out there. If, our, if my dear sister is struggling with something, I want to be able to help. I want to be able to help out. I want to be able to pray. I want to be there. That's what I'm here for, is to like try to help people, right? 
and I'm human, obviously. And thank you. Some people reached out to me and was like, Regina, where are you, girl? Where you where you at? You okay? You good? Thank you so much. I appreciate that because I am human. And I do have to take some time to get my own self together. I'm like, let me get myself together before I can encourage anybody else. Because the devil throws things at me too. But I've just learned how to fight him back a little bit better. Because I've learned that God, just like how she was saying, I don't have to sit and and do all that fighting and do all that tripping and falling and crying. I have to do that. I begin to laugh, y'all. I'm not even I'm not even playing with y'all. I started laugh. It was started becoming comical. Like, are you serious, devil? Okay, now you're gonna try something else. Like, are you are you for real right now? Stop it, you know? And, and then after that, it was like things just kind of let up because that was like, okay, well, I tried her this way, I tried her that way, I tried her this way. And 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 he just was like, all right, I'm done. I'm done for now. We all know he'll be back. It was something different, a different tactic, something different. He's just trying to see what can he shake me. He brings up stuff. Uh, he, he knows your weakness. Like we discussed earlier, he'll know your weakness. And that's what he prays on, right? So let's just go ahead and pray. Uh, let's pray out. Oh, let's pray out, y'all. So I just pray, Lord God, for every person that is watching on today. Father, touch them right now where they are. Help them to be able to put their girdle on and to put on everything that will protect them, put on uh, things spiritually so that when, when time comes, or even if they're in a battle right now, that they will know the scriptures, they will know how to pull up um, prayers and to pray against anything that the enemy is trying to come against them. We bind everything, everything that would try to come against them to get them to backslide, to get them to go into anxiety, get anxiety, go into depression, go into oppression, go into all of the stuff. We, we, we bind that in the name of Jesus. We, we got loose them now. We pray that you would loose them, let them go, let them be free, let joy come upon them, happiness. And we thank you for it. And we thank you that I'm back, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. I'll be back doing those videos, these videos regularly. Yes, and yes, and yes. And if you see me going that long, get to praying, okay? <laughs> so that's it for this video. I will talk to you all later. See you all in the next video. Bye, guys.